So this is going to be about Beto O'Rourke. I'm going to give you a little bit of his history, and then we'll do a draw to see if he's going to be the next governor of Texas. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. I actually lived in Texas for a while, about six years, I think, near Dallas. And uh, so I feel like I have a flavor of that place that are from the South. And then uh, one of my viewers, who's very dedicated, is actually from El Paso. So I thought we'd talk about uh, Beto O'Rourke, uh, tell you a little bit about him, and then do a draw on his uh, potential success uh, beating uh, Greg Abbott. So I don't know a lot, but I'll tell you what I do know. And that is that in 1972, Robert Francis Beto O'Rourke was born on September 26th, so he's a Libra. And he was born in El Paso, Texas. He's the a fourth-generation Irish American, and his family nicknamed him Beto to distinguish him from a namesake grandfather. Uh, he was born into a local political family, and the other grandpa, uh, Pat O'Rourke, was a county commissioner and county judge uh, in El Paso. So in 1986, in the eighth grade at 14 or 15 uh, years old, he started going to local punk uh, shows, you know, punk music, punk bands, and was a member of of a computer hack group. So that gives you an idea of who he was as a teenager. Then in 1988, he enrolled at Woodbury Forest All-Male uh, Boarding School in Madison County, uh, Virginia. So you'd think uh, that's kind of an expense. Uh, I don't know uh, how affluent they were. But then in 1995, he graduated Columbia University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Literature. He's fluent in English and Spanish. And Beto had a brief music career as a bass guitarist in a post hardcore band in college and played shows at bars and clubs in New York. After college, he returned to El Paso uh, for a career in business. Then in 2005, however, he was elected to the El Paso City Council uh, until uh, 2011. So back to politics for the O'Rourke. Then uh, 2012, uh, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives uh, for Texas. Then in 20 and also in 2014, 2016, and uh, 2019. Okay, so then in 2018, however, he sought the U.S. Senate seat, uh, but he lost to Ted Cruz. Um, then in 2022, Beto O'Rourke is the Democratic gubernatorial nominee against incumbent Governor uh, Greg Abbott. So that's everything I know, and we'll do the cards. All right, so let's see what we can find out about uh, Beto O'Rourke. So, poor Beto. I love these cards. They're nice and bright, so they should show up really nicely uh, on the uh, video today. And uh, Beto O'Rourke. So, so, what a decent seeming uh, guy he is. Um, I guess really... There's some court. Always want to know. First of all, is if the people are earnest, if they're honest, if they're nice, if they're good. I mean, that's kind of a very basic uh, place to start, and that's sort of how you decide if you're going to make friends with somebody. You kind of decide in the first, you know, seconds uh, if you like uh, what they seem to be, who they seem to be, and then uh, that stays with you. So I think first, what we're going to do is find out. Uh, what kind of a person he is, and then we'll do a long draw on. Oh, look, the cards have got a tear in them. I hate that. And then we'll do a long draw on um, what is going to happen. But before we do any of that, uh, let's uh, go ahead and have just a moment of meditation. So we're going to shuffle him up and then just do three cards on a basic question as to whether he's a good person. Simple. You know, why not ask that little simple question? He's a bit over a sincere, good, you know, person doing all these things for the right reasons. Just three cards for that uh, little question. Okay. So one, two, three. 
two, and three. Is he a good person? No. Is he a bad guy? Because I think we have those two stripes right now. First card, is he a good person? Well, the Queen of Swords. So this is pretty good. I mean, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, and the Queen of Swords is, is a very strong indicator of an up, uh, someone who's going to uphold uh, those uh, virtues. Next card, for is he a good person? King of Cups. He's compassionate. He's got more compassion in him than he does uh, on the Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And maybe that's the kind of mix that you'd want to have. You want, you want a compassionate person who could temper uh, you know, the more harsh part of whatever it is that they have, they have to accomplish in their life. And then the last card for that, this is nice. This is the Four of Wands. Wands are action plans, forward movement. And the Four of Wands, I always say, are smallish celebrations on towards something bigger. So is he a good person? Yeah, he's a good person. He seems to have a nice balance, not an equal balance, but a nice balance of of uh, honor uh, versus compassion and uh, seems to be prone to smallish uh, celebrations. So yeah, that's the kind of guy you'd want. Uh, next thing I want to know is does he have the best intentions uh, for uh, becoming governor? Are his intentions for coming, be, wanting to become governor honorable? And are these, is this something that he just wants the fame? He just wants to have been known as the governor of Texas, which who wouldn't? What's wrong with that? You know, say, yeah, listen, my uh, dad, my grandpa, me, I was governor of Texas. Or is he in this for a passionately good reason? Three cards. One, two, three. So it'll be interesting to see how the cards can decipher a question like that. So, it's the unit for Texas, I guess, is a good way to look at it. Well, this is interesting because, in fact, uh, this put, does put him off on a new journey, okay? So the fool, when he uh, wants to enter onto that journey, he's full of confidence. He's... Uh, you would have to think that the fool uh, feels like they're going towards something uh, interesting, better, adventurous, and uh, with the, he's got the sun shining on him for that. So this seems promising. Is it for Texas? Well, the High Priestess. High Priestess comes to this with all the knowledge that she needs. She stands between strength and justice. It's not what these two things specifically stand for, but I always forget the definite de definition of these two pillars. But one is strength, and uh, I think the other one's knowledge, actually. But uh, so, yeah, so the High Priestess is a pretty auspicious card to have when we're trying to say, are you doing this for Texas? And also, this uh, gives a nod towards, um, you know, the Hierophant or the structure by which uh, something is, is done. So those are pretty good. Is he doing it for, for Texas? And then the last card is the Seven of Cups. Cups are compassion, which we know that he has a lot of, or the cards just told us that he has a lot of. But um, it, it's also known as Illusion and Delusion. But it's also having lots of choices. And, you know, to to deal with this card, you want to know how to use this choice. So is he doing this for Texas? I think there's several reasons that he's doing this. He's doing it for the, the many reasons uh, that perhaps, um, you know, he, he can choose from to, I would think, according to these cards, uh, do something uh, honorable and wise for the community that he wants to govern. And uh, he's um, confidently off on this journey. So I would say, yeah, he's doing it for as anyone would you know you wouldn't do it solely a uh, few people would do something solely altruistic uh, you know he certainly does want uh, some of the fame of that but now let's see uh, will he win just three cards on will he win and then we'll do a long draw to see more about how he'll govern if he does win okay will he win three cards against Greg Abbott one two Three will, but O'Rourke. And if the cards say no, then I don't know what we'll do for a long draw. So, um, will he win against Greg Agate? Well, look at this. So, this is a <coughs> big <coughs> cup of compassion. Okay, so this is uh, certainly uh, a positive indicator as to whether he'll win. Next card, ah, the key to all of this is practicing his craft, getting this just right. And he's running a few races, and so you could say that he's practicing this this politician uh, craft and then the last card as to whether he'll win hmm worrying as to whether you've done enough has your value been up to the up to task wow so 
it's not definitive, is it? Let's draw one more card. I really shouldn't, but we'll draw one more card uh, to see uh, if it gives us something more. Will he win or will he not win? Will he win or will he not win? Ah. Uh, Still not definitive. Actions, plans, uh, useless, uh, pointless uh, arguing and um, interference. Um, you know, it doesn't look good, and uh, it it will probably be a hard um, a hard fought a battle uh, if he does. Hmm. So I can't, so we'll have to change then our last question a little bit. We'll have to say if he won, how would he? Uh, you know, how would he do for Texas? So, um, not Greg Abbott, let's get that out of the cards right now. So, Beto O'Rourke. Beto O'Rourke. Will, what will he do, for, or how will he, will he have Texas's best interest at heart, and um, does he have it in him to get done what he needs to get done? Six cards, and we'll see if we want to do another four. So, basically, how is he going to govern Texas? See what the cards can tell us. How many have I done? Is this five? I think this is five. One. Can't believe two. Five. Yeah, one more. And then six. So how will he govern if he gets to be the governor? Signifier card. Oh. I do like when the cards repeat, so it's looking back on the divinations that we've had. It's getting to know wh how I'm going to interpret a card. That's what I feel like when the cards repeat. Then uh, whomever this information is coming from kind of says, okay, that's how he reads that card. So now I ha can use it again to better make another sentence. Okay, so the signifier card as to how he'll govern is he'll always worry whether he's done enough. Ah. Uh, and the challenge to it is this very compassionate card, this five, six, seven, eight of cups, and this is really having to walk away from from heartfelt issues. It looks like it's going to be if he were to get uh, the, the 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 seat, it would be a lot of there would be a lot of compromises involved because you got to remember there's a corrupt infrastructure there that Greg Abbott has had in place for some time. The basis of this whole thing, well, this is very good. So the basis is with this 10 of Pentacles, all this value, and it's familiar, it's generational value, okay? So the, all of this, and look at, these are nice cards in a way, but it's all built on generational value for the state and the party, I would think. And in the past, this more of practicing your craft, which is again a repeat card. So he will have had practiced his craft, and um, hopefully it will have been enough. And in the sky of this, uh, the aim for all of this, again with the pinnacles, look at all the pinnacles we've got here, uh, putting something together for public display in cooperation with others. So that's how I see that three of pinnacles. And so that's what his aim is, to just do the best he can, uh, make something that to be proud of uh, with the help of others. And then in the... Um, the likely outcome of the first part of this with this hermit is really, you know, studying what you're going to do before you make the next step. And that really does play in well with this uh, worrying about whether you've done enough. So let's go ahead and do four more cards, but we'll do a little shuffle just like that. That's all we need for the four more cards. So the very self of that question for Beto O'Rourke, uh, how will he govern if he were to win? Ah, truth. And justice. In the environment of what? Uh, in the environment of secrets being revealed, of course, because there's a lot of, like I said, there's uh, political infrastructure there, uh, people who are running things that uh, the truth has to be revealed about what they've been doing. Um, the hopes and the fears then, ah, uh, all of this truth, justice, rules, and law hanging up on the wall here is a worry, a nightmare. Okay, so it won't be an easy situation for him if he does get into office. And the likely outcome of the whole thing, well, with this King of Wands, if he were to get to win the seat, um, he will be the king of actions. 
okay, of getting things done, in fact. So uh, how would he, he uh, uh, rule, you could say, if he became governor? Well, he'd always be worried about whether he's done enough and understanding that there are compromises. We have to walk away from some very compassionate held uh, situ um, feelings. Uh, but the whole thing is built on a strong foundation of generational value. And uh, in the past, we have really having practiced your the craft of getting the most out of your value so that you can aim for just doing the putting something really together to be proud of with the consideration of others. And then the likely outcome of it is that you end up being very cautious about how you take that next step. And the very self of that question as to how he would uh, govern uh, is this great big uh, truth and justice and rules and law, uh, ACE. So that's wonderful, but it's, it's challenged by, it's in the environment of all the secrets being revealed. I think about what went on before he got into office. And then uh, the hopes and the fears is that it just, the fear is that it just will be a nightmare for all of these issues that we have to be dealt with about truth, justice, rules, and law. And then, uh, the, uh, likely outcome would be that he would be a ruler, uh, with a plan to get things done. So that's be good, but we don't know if he would definitely, you know what? Let's do three cards just real quick. Will he win? Will he win? Will he win? Justice. Uh, end of a journey. Big offer of value. Will he win? Well, justice will prevail. All right. It will be the end of something, definitely. And a big offer of value will be what's in its place. So this kind of looks hopeful. It looks like perhaps it would. What did you think? Was that, um, did that come out the way you thought? Because some, everyone is really pulled on this opinion. People don't know if they like him, if they don't like him, if they want him to win, if they don't want him to win. And uh, if he replaces uh, the current uh, governor, is that going to be the correct choice? So let me know what you think. And tell me what you'd like me to read on, because I'll read on that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this is the newest deck I've got. This is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbio on um, the um, the classic uh, Rider Waite Tarot. But uh, apparently this person wise has had their input into it. And uh, the, what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like what I think of when I open these containers is if I got this as a gift, what would I think about it? And I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box, I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're going to see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, I'll go over, but I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And, you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks it's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific uh, synopsis of uh, how uh, this uh, uh, rider weight uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about author weight and Pamela Coleman Smith, who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic theory and history of all of that. Um, it, is, it gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the cards. So I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth shattering. It's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now, the cards themselves, they got a cool back. They're kind of shiny. And um, you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique -y kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems and so in that they're close up, but they're still vibrant with color. And I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One, is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in a typical tarot drawing. And that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, then there's a third uh, benefit, is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle or and then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. And I just like them a lot. So this will be my newest deck. 
Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come, so ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.